Today's episode of Film Rides brought to you by a full sale. Welcome to Film Ride Mondays. Today we're doing the thing that we always do when we do a Film Ride Mondays. You might know what that is. You might not. I'm going to keep you guessing. I'm going to keep them guessing. Are you curious? Nope. Are you thrilled? Not even How a little thrilling. bit. How thrilling? Nope. How thrilling. Mail sack. Mail sack. Taking a look in Ryan's mail sack. What do you think your next camera will be? Whoa. I don't know. Um... I put so much less stock in cameras than I used to. I really, really believe wholeheartedly that it is the person holding the camera, not the camera itself. I just want something that can pull in the type of quality that I need, and it depends on the type of project that you're doing. I mean, I wouldn't want to shoot Film Riot on a Red Epic all the time. That workflow is just far too heavy and it would bog it down a lot. I'm really interested in seeing what the Blackmagic uh, camera can do. We should be getting our hands on that one pretty soon. Check that one out. If I dig it, I think I might upgrade to that because there's a lot of reasons to get away from the DSLR when it comes to like studio shooting and things like that. The more air, you know, Tom, you guys know the issues, but really uh, in the long run, it's all about the person using it, not necessarily about the camera. I mean, if I could have a Red Epic and you know, one of the greatest DPs in Hollywood could have a friggin' point and shoot, you know, iPhone or something and theirs is probably gonna look better. So it's all about the talent behind the camera, not the camera. Would you prefer somebody gave you money and insisted you made a feature film with it, or would you rather make several short films with the same amount of money? That is an interesting question. I mean, I, obviously I really wanna make a feature, but at the same time, with a short film, you have a lot of little, there's a more, more of a safety net there to where I could explore a lot of the things that I still want to explore within genre and sharpen my uh, skills as a filmmaker and test out a few uh, theories I have within filmmaking before jumping into my first feature. But I mean, the feature is a feature. I, I think I would probably go short films to hone my craft a little bit more before I dive into the first feature. I think that's a problem with a lot of people's first feature is they jump into it before they're fully ready for it. And so what comes out is, a subpar feature film. I really don't want that to happen for my first. I'm, I'm, I, it's kind of like my baby. I'm being so cautious and I'm cradling it and I'm like, you're not ready to come out of the womb yet, little feature film baby. Keep cooking a few more months. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. You like that analogy? Sure. Worst comic book movie of all time. That's an easy one, Catwoman. That was the worst. Dude, Actually, sucks. yeah. Balls. And we we did on Variant, we did an episode all about uh, the worst comic book movies of all time, which was hilarious because Eris broke out, I think, what was it, five of them? Five of them, yeah. Five just movies that made me so sad in my heart that they were made that poorly. Check out this episode right here and check out Variant if you haven't yet. The show is fantastic. I'm loving it. Why are all your videos shot in 720p, not 1080p? Big fan. I do want to start upgrading to 1080p, but uh, for our workflow, 720p works a lot better. We actually have to distribute to a lot of different uh, platforms and they all take 720, but they don't all take 1080. Uh, I think we're going to be upgrading that really soon. So that probably switched to 1080p within the future. Do you think getting into the industry the way Robert Rodriguez explains it in Rebel Without a Crew still exists in the world today? I think there are a multitude of avenues to get into it as Robert Rodriguez explained it. I think, yeah, that absolutely still exists, but I think the easiest way now is the internet. Uh, the internet is pretty much the way to go. There's been a lot of people, a lot of people that have gotten feature film deals just by doing their own uh, short films and putting them on the internet and getting noticed and then boom, they're landing their first gig. So I don't know, for, from my point of view nowadays, the, the, the biggest fast track to it is the internet because I mean, you can also gain an audience and an audience is power. And if you can get an audience behind yourself like Freddie Wong, you can uh, leverage that in a big, big way to get yourself your first feature deal. What lens do you find that you use the most and why? We're very run and gun, so for me it's a zoom lens. I mean, if I'm sitting down and we're taking our time on each shot, I prefer prime lenses. They're a lot more sharp and I like the image quality that we get from them a lot more, especially like the Zeiss CP2 lenses are amazing. But the one I use most on my 5D is a 24 through 105 L series Canon lens. Uh, I think it bottoms out around 
four, which is good for uh, 5D because you don't want to go too much more than that or you're, there's pulling focus on that is like a freaking nightmare. It's going to be out of focus the entire time. But for me, because we're so run and gun, it has to be a zoom lens so I can just pop in and pop out of different focal lengths without constantly having to switch the lens out. How do you manage to run film right, film state, and try and film at the same time? And how did you start trying films? I really need help with my production company. Uh, it was a really, really long process. I mean, I started trying and films, uh, how old am I? So seven years ago, seven or eight years ago, and I've pretty much been working day in and day out, 24 seven to get this thing up and going. For me, it was a really, really long and hard process uh, because I did it by myself. I did it outside of any system and I started it from the freaking ground up most groundy grounded up you could possibly start something. I mean, I didn't even really have my own gear when I started. It took years to build my gear set because I was doing such small work and getting such small income. So building that up was slowly but surely, but it grows incrementally over time. And uh, as far as running everything, I mean, I have help now, but um, uh, before it was pretty much by having a full-time job and doing film right at the same time and just not sleeping. I think, uh, on a weekly basis, I would go at least two days without sleeping to make sure the episodes got out, plus did my full-time job. So it's that's what I mean about passion, what I said um, before. If you're not that passionate about it, it's really hard to make it in that sense if you want to do it from the ground up because it really is your entire life for a very long time. It is 24-7. So if you aren't absolutely passionate, in love with the thing, I don't know. Who is on the tell poster? It's actually not the actress from the film. I think this is the first person that's ever brought yeah. this up. It's actually my sister Amber, who you've heard me talk about a lot. She works uh, for my company. And we shot it before we even shot the film, before even Shauna was cast as like a kind of a, this is the vibe I want the film to be. And it's actually on an island in a kitchen because it's all white, but then with white garbage bags spread all over it and then blood, and it's all real. The blood is the blood that spells tell is all blood that was actually there and then it was just touched up in Photoshop, but she's laying across an island and I'm standing over her. I had to Photoshop my feet out, my little hobbit feet out of the thing. Anyway, there you go, it's my sister. So if you're like, hey, I wanna be a filmmaker. Full Sail University has degree programs that can help you achieve said goal, including the on-campus film bachelor degree program and the online digital cinematography's bachelor program. Through the film bachelor degree program, you'll learn the filmmaking process from start to finish on a campus that is equipped like a Hollywood studio backlot. I mean, the thing looks like you're in California on a making a moviness. It's ridiculous. And in the online digital cinematography bachelor's program, you'll learn what it takes to write, shoot, and edit your own films. Online students receive a technology package that includes a professional level digital video camera. And Full Sail University also offers a variety of on-campus and online degrees in fields related to the entertainment and media industry, including video games, art and design, recording arts, entertainment business, and many more. Just visit fullsail.edu forward slash film riot to learn more. Now it's time for a fantastically terrible moment in cinema. Are you okay, Danny? I'm okay. Are you okay? I'm okay. What's I'm okay. okay? He's taking drugs. Come on, stop. It was a mistake. A mistake. Then he takes drugs. Let's go home. Come on, it's clear. What's clear? I am going to call the police. Mom, stop. It was Denny's mistake. Just stop. Oh. Let's go. Why did you do this? You know better, right? I'm so Why? I'm sorry. You know better, Denny. You almost got killed. I'm sorry. It won't happen again, I promise. Jenny, you know that Johnny's like your father, and we're your friends. We're going to help you. That was both fantastic and terrible. So that's it for today, which means it's time for my short film suggestion of the week. This one comes from Neil Bloomkamp, and it's before his first feature film, and it's actually what the first feature film was based on, uh, District 9, and it's called Alive in Joburg, which you can find right here. It is a really great short film uh, done a long time ago, and it's pretty much District 9 with a really, really, really low budget. And you can see that a lot of his ideas were just developing, which he really knocked out of the park in the feature once a lot more time and a lot of help was put into it. So it's really interesting to see the original idea and then what it actually ended up turning into when he ultimately did the feature, which I believe he always wanted to do a feature from the beginning. And it's just a really great uh, commentary on that situation with sci-fi. And I, I think the short film kind of focuses more on the idea that he was trying to get across and less on the entertainment side, which I think the film did a great job too, but it's interesting to see the contrast of how both were handled. So check it out there, and I'll see you guys next week.